There are a bunch of tutorials online on how to fix layer shifts when it comes to FDM prints, but not that many with resin prints. And the reason I was looking this up is because a few weeks ago, this happened. It's not a huge layer shift, but it, it ruins the model, especially for a resin print that's generally pretty high detail. So I can't really use this for anything. And I, I thought of throwing it away because I'm not going to use it, but I don't like throwing things away. I'm, I'm kind of a hoarder when it comes to this, and that's, that's the general vibe of this workshop. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, got an SSR that I'll never use. Another SSR. I think that's an SKR 1.3. I don't even know what this is. Oh, it's an MP3 player module for an Arduino. Cool. I will never use these. So I've decided to, to try and repair a layer shift on a resin print. There's pretty much nothing online about this, but let's go through some options. So for small mistakes, I would actually just use some resin, just brush it on and cure that. Uh, but that's, that's really just a filler. And for bigger mistakes, you can use any other kind of filler. So we could use some of this plastic filler, maybe this kind of plaster or wood filler, or maybe even an epoxy resin, something like that. But if you're filling, you don't really have any control on the texture on the surface. It's just going to be a flat fill part. So this is a resin print. I want there to be texture. I want to be able to sculpt that and allow it to blend in with the rest of the surface features of that print. So I thought maybe something like clay would work and we can just put that on and then brush resin over it and it will blend in a bit. No matter which method you choose though, we are still limited to the amount of detail that we can put on this filler. Resin prints can be incredibly detailed. We have 14K LCDs now, and the amount of detail that you can put into a resin print is phenomenal. So whatever we do, we are still limited to the amount of detail. It's not gonna blend in with the rest of the model. We will probably have to prime and paint it afterwards so that it looks perfect. So I decided to use this. This is polymer clay and you can get it in pretty much any art shop for a couple of euro. It's designed to be oven baked. So you basically just sculpt this, put it in the oven up to around 130 degrees and it will get really, really hard. The great thing about this is that it is soluble in solvents like isopropanol or acetone so that you can smooth it to blend in all of the parts together. So what we're going to do is literally just slap this on to the model and sculpt any details we want to have. Then we can smooth it with isopropanol so that it all blends in together. Then we can air dry it for a little bit. Now this isn't really designed to be air dried, but it does work slightly. It will harden, but it won't harden enough. So after that, we can put on some normal 3D printer resin, cure that, and then we can prime and paint it. And we should have a perfectly repaired model hopefully. Maybe for smaller prints, this is a bit overkill and you might be better off printing something again. If it is that small, it's just easier that way, but this will no doubt be helpful. And it's not only suitable for layer shifts, any sort of error in the surface of your print, you can use this method to fix it. Okay, let's just go for it and see what happens. So here is our Groot. He's looking pretty good, except of course for this huge gash down his face. Yeah, there's no sanding that down. We're going to have to use some filler or something for that. So firstly, I have cleaned and cured this. I am hoping the actual polymer clay can stick to it because resin prints are smooth and slippy. So let's just smear some on and we'll go from there. We don't need to worry about details right now. We're just filling in that layer shift. So just smoosh as much as you can in. And later on, we'll work on the details. Okay, it looks like it's not falling off, which is fantastic. We can now brush on some isopropanol to smooth out all that clay. I want this to be really, really smooth to match the resin textures, so not even fingerprints should be visible. And this solvent will clean up any flakes as well. You don't actually need that much isopropanol to smooth this. Uh, I think I used a bit too much right now, 
Uh, the problem with using too much is that it will take longer to, to air dry. And if it doesn't air dry completely, then it will be very sticky. And also the resin that you put on afterwards will not cure as quickly. Now we can add some detail with the end of this brush. And I have also used my hands to sculpt an ear shaped bit of clay, but then also use the brush for what I can't do with my hands. Obviously, the more detailed you want this, the harder it will be. And there is a limit to what you can achieve here. So we just put on a thin layer and spread it evenly. Be as thin as you can with these resin layers. Your washing cure is designed to cure something that is very, very thin and after it's been washed in isopropanol. So be as thin as you can. You only need a really, really thin layer to protect the actual polymer clay. After a couple of layers of resin and cured in our washing cure, it is looking pretty okay. And now the only thing left to do is priming and painting. And here is the final result compared to what we started with. I actually can't see that there was any issue with the print to begin with, and it looks great with a coat of paint. Hopefully this helps you guys if you've ever had an issue like this. It's not suitable for all problems, but it can definitely get you out of a bind if the situation presents itself. If you guys have any questions, then let us know in the comments below or write us an email. And if you like what you saw, consider clicking on that like button or that subscribe button. And we'll see you again next time. Later.